Hello everyone, this is Ricky Fury again, bringing you another video about survivability in Star Trek Online. My last video talked about some of the more expensive consoles that, um, that, 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 that take, take a lot of different currencies in order to obtain in, in the game, but, but are definitely um, valuable to have for a higher le le level tank. That's definitely not for everyone, but it's definitely something to consider if, if you're going for the extreme late game in Star Trek Online. Um, this video, we'll be talking about the differences between tactical captains and en en engineering captains in, in the game. And just my personal two cents into it. Just because a lot of the community out there says that tactical is just ridiculously OP. And I'm just trying to put my two cents as to say why some of them think that way. And why I personally think that, that they are okay the way that they are at right now. All right, so um, what I'm going to do is I, I, I'm, I'm going to talk about tactical first. Um, this is um, Adir Shalom's main main ship, the Alachi Shensar in, Intel Dreadnought Cruiser. Um, some of you may not have seen her build before. Um, she does a di disruptor damage build. Some of this stuff is pretty standard from what you'll probably see in a lot of all the DPS um, type of builds. Um, my personal beams are a little bit different than what you'll find in a lot of other people who try to do the high-end tanking just because I personally value a lot of the passive hull regen and max hit points um, over other stuff like like the sensor link stuff that have like an additional crit chance and, and defense. But, but that's just my opinion versus someone else. Um, Everyone else is entitled to their own opinion, and that's kind of the way it is. Um, whenever it comes to like the, the actual, actual abilities themselves, um, each um, captain, uh, well, before the expansion, um, has ha, has five um, career-specific abilities. I believe in the expansion it goes to like six or seven, something like that. Um, but th but these are the five for now. Um, whenever the expansion comes out, I'll be happy to. Add, add an, another video or two just talking about the different stuff that they added, anything that might change in the other abilities to, to add those abilities, and as, as to how the balance may have changed for tanks. But we'll, we'll, let's go ahead and, and just get started the way it is. Um, whenever, whenever someone thinks of tactical in, in terms of this game, they always think about attack pattern alpha, um, which gives additional crit chance and crit severity. Um, no one talks about the turn rate, but it gives um, good crit chance and crit severity. Um, it also gives a lot of bonus all damage for, for, for the 20 seconds that it, it is active. Um, now, bonus all damage is a category 2 type of damage instead of like your weaker category 1 um, damage you get from like most, most sources like tackle consoles. And so th this damage is very, very valuable to have, especially if, if you're wanting just an instant boost of a threat generation for your character. So also, they also have another ability called Fire on, on my mark. This is a, this is an, unfortunately only a single single target ability, so it's not really great whenever you're fighting lots of enemies. But on the rare occasion that you're only fighting one really strong enemy, this, this is really good to lower the resistance so that you do more damage overall. Um, there's another ability called Tactical Initiative as a Kind of engine, engine normal guy myself. I don't see the full value in this. I mean, sure, like whenever you're spamming a lot of your tactical abilities, like you you can use use this and like cut those cooldowns in half. But the thing is, like almost all of your normal tactical abilities are going to have um, like let like a base cooldown anyway. And and if there's cooldowns that are super essential to you to have up anyway for a normal normal tactical character. Um, and you're at the super high end, you're probably going to invest um, a lot of EC in order to get the, those stuff in, in the game. Like, like just so you all know, like um, at, at the super high end in, in this game, there are there are a lot more tactical captains than there are science or engineering captains. So a lot more of them will will be willing to like pay the EC or the lobby or the Zen to get the cool stuff in order to make their ship that much some stronger. I mean, like, definitely at the budget end, this, this is nice. Um, at the higher end, it's definitely not like, going to be valuable to you at all. Um, their, uh, their tactical fleet is also nice because it gives you bonus all damage again. 
alongside um, targeting and defense expertise, which is, I believe, if I remember correctly, uh, this is just offhand, so I probably could be wrong on this, but I believe it's about six accuracy and defense. And then it's about another like 1.6% um, critical chance and, and another 16% critical severity that you add to your entire team, which, which is nice. Um, it does have a, have a five minute cooldown, like basically all of the, all of, of the fleet powers, but it, it is at least nice. Um, this is two minutes. Um, this one is the weird one. It's called Go Down Fighting. So basically the way that tactical works is if, if you started to see the theme here is their theme is I'm going to destroy you as fast as possible. And that's basically it for, for tactical. They like, like they're very much geared towards damage and nothing else. So um, like the way this ability works is, is it's like it's like if the if the enemy is attempting to like destroy you and, and, and they're actually starting to succeed, then you're, then you're normally able to activate this this ability. This ability is normally available only whenever you go below 50% health. And then the damage resistance and um, bonus all damage. No, sorry. I think it's just but the, the damage that then increases with, with your whole loss. But um, uh, you, you get the 20 all damage bonus damage, damage whenever you activate the ability as well. Now, just so you all realize, this is a 15 second ability. And it's a 45 second cooldown overall. So, um, so in theory, like like if you're always below 50% health, you'll always be able to activate this this like you'll be able to have like 15 seconds with it and 30 seconds without it. Um, or if you invest in in um, a trade off of the exchange called a good day to die. Which, as you can tell for the title, this is kind of like, like a Klingon theme type of, of ability. But um, but basically, um, this this allows your go down fighting to be used at any hull integrity, and for the ability to pretend that your that your hull is at 50% hull integrity whenever it's uh, whenever it's above that for for its um, scaling all damage um, bonus because because it, it it increases with hull loss. And so, so if you, if you have that ability, and then you add this trait, which you get inherently whenever you're leveling up with a tactical captain, that that, that increases this resistance from 20 to 60, which this is invaluable really unless you have this trait too. So yeah, if you have these two traits combined, this becomes a very very strong ability for a tanking tactical captain because it allows you to spam. Um, your bonus all damage, which again, it's also a category two, and it's very close to attack pattern alpha. It's like just about the same, and, and this is about the same whenever this, whenever you're at 50% whole. Whenever you're lower than this, and this, this goes even higher. And like even 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 on my ship, which 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 is which is at, at about a 40% resistance resistance. Whenever I'm using this, it goes all the way up to about 50% right off the bat. And now, when you combine this with other traits, very often in, in in a long and intensive battle, my my resistances stats over here, at least what the game says it is, it, this is still a debate as to whether this is really the case or whether the game just likes to show you what what the stats are here and it still just caps at 75. But the game really shows um, through, throughout a lot of my battles that my stats are like around 85% res resistances. Whenever I'm whenever I, I, I'm fighting, I have like other stuff up. Um, if I activate the DP arm console and I activate this thing, I mean this thing. Um, it's it's a spammable ability. You're able to use. You basically able to have up um, dur during a third of all of, of of your fights. That's give you additional damage, um, and it's give you additional um, resistances. I was able to have after resistances be on par with like what I was showing um, in previous videos, like really similar to what my engineering captain typically has, which is why I, I don't invest as much into resistances for for a tackle captain as I will for an, an engineering captain, just because if you, if you invest in one trait on the exchange, this thing becomes very powerful.
But enough of that. Let's get over to my en en engineering captain. Talk about those abilities there and kind of close out close out the, the video there. As you can see here, she's still in her classic um, vehicle, uh, my um, my Shenzhou, my fun little Shenzhou. However long it takes this thing to load, um, but but I guess, I guess while it's loading, I'll go ahead and start just kind of just start talk, talking about the abilities. Um, one of the ones that I feel is most important as an engineering captain is an ability called EPS power transfer um, and this this ability um, is really nice because um, it, it allows like all the all the power levels to go up by 25 and if you combine that that ability with like for instance like if you, if you have the red matter capacitor which you'll you will be able to get um, decently easily um, during the event that's going on right now with with the Phoenix lockboxes like if you if you combine EPS power transfer um, with the red, red magnetic capacitor, as I've demonstrated probably before, your power levels go up really high really easily. Um, so I would say overall, I mean, when it comes to power levels, um, engineers have the easiest time having high power levels, um, and with keeping them up without having like to buy things like deuterium surplus or um, or some other like um, consumable that, that that increases your power levels temporarily for for 30 seconds so um, this 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 ability is, is extremely nice and it's why I, I have this one really close to my other ones that I, I use frequently just so that but when I want that power boost, I don't have to think about it. I, I can just push my buttons and be able to use it immediately. One that you get super early in so the game is called Rotate Shield Frequency. Now, before I started thinking about actually being a tank, strangely enough, when I started the game, I chose to be an, an engineer and tried to go a tactical route, which didn't really work that well, but um, I still have that character, sadly. Um, um, I just thought of rotate shield frequently just as a shield regeneration buff. However, as as you can see there, it also gives a significant amount of shield resistance for for that for that thirty seconds. So true, like like you have something like here if you if you have USPS power transfer which increases all power levels plus power transfer rate. So what those power, additional power levels power transfer we'll be able to do is allow you to give a little bit a little bit of survivability and a little bit more threat generation as well. What this thing will allow you to do is allow you to be able to um, have have a lot more um, have a lot, a lot more resistance and and a lot more damage recovery overall. Uh, there's also this ability, which um, most people completely ignore as as an engineer, because all all that they, all that they see here is the 320 resistance rating to system power drain. So they're like Okay, unless I'm fighting the Breen, who are going to drain pa power in general, or the Borg, who are going to drain my shields, I'm, I'm going to completely ignore this ability, which is wrong. This thing is used for another thing. This has a, a significant weapon power cost reduction for, for the 30 seconds that this thing is active. So, like, for instance, like, if you are activating, like, EPS power transfer with the remote capacitor, and then you activate this little guy here, you're getting a super significant weapon power cost reduction, which will allow you to ha which which allow you to to main maintain like your beams going off. Uh, it will allow you to ma to maintain your threat levels um, m much higher higher than normal. Um, let's see. All alongside that, um, we also have engineering fleet. Um, which overall, as as a tank, this actually isn't that beneficial overall. It does give you some war core potential and whole and, and whole region, um, 
but overall, like when I use this as a tank, this is more of to help with the survival of, of my teammates who have haven't built correctly to have survival in 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 their stuff in general. Um, that's why I will off. That's why I that, that's when I actually use this, and that's why it's not like in my base set of powers overall. Um, whatever most people think of engineers, though, they probably think about miraculous repairs or Whenever I started the game, this this was called Miracle Worker, and um, it's a significant hull and shield um, re instant repair. Um, it's not like, like your science abilities that like heal over over time. This this is an instant repair, and depending upon how much you've invested in your skills, like hull restoration and shield restoration. This this can recover anywhere from like 50% all the way up to like almost all of your hull and shields just from the ability. And um, the, um, the 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 engineer um, really special tr um, space trait. Uh, whenever you get to the higher end, it's not as as useful, but for especially for the budget and even some of the mid level stuff, it's still a decent trait. Uh, if I can find it. Um, yeah, brace on, on fire. So it's sorry it took me that long to find it. Um, but it's basically like right after you, you use the, this this ability, um, if you take more than twenty percent of, of your of of your whole hit hit points during it during that um, d during a five se se second period after you use this. Um, Um, then, then, then it resets the ability. Now, keep in mind, um, this is this ability has a four-minute cooldown, and um, it, it it resets if um, you take 20% or more hit points in the five-second period within that first two minutes of activating uh, miraculous repairs. Um, basically, basically, like up to like halfway through this thing after you use it, like if you happen to have another significant um, engagement, um, then it'll, it'll completely reset mir uh, miraculous repairs. Now, it, if if it resets and then you use use it again, it'll still be a four minute cooldown again, not like down to two minutes. But it uh, every time this thing comes back up, um, it'll be a four minute cooldown regardless of whether or not it came up because of n the normal time, whether it was because of grace under under fire. That's also why it says like you can only trigger once every ninety seconds. So like. In the super theoretical, like if if you want to go theoretical here, um, this thing could technically be up every about 90 seconds to two minutes um, if if um, you lose hull at the right time and and you've had to use use this a a, a, a building. Um, so yeah, um, overall, like, well, um. In terms of the differences between tactical tanks and en engineering tanks, tactical tanks, their only real advantage is that they do more damage. So they do a lot more threat generation. Um, you still deal good threat generation, like not as high as theirs, obviously, because they have two bonus all, all damage things. But like you, you still have emergency power transfer combined with um, Nadion in inversion which allows you to have high power levels that stay high for the for the 30 seconds that that, that you have this up. So this like but this this like really high power level whenever you're activating your abilities or it's not abilities like your like beam weapons it's it's not going to decrease very much at all for the 30 seconds that you have that you have have this up. That combined with that yes you have some decent shield resistance built in built into your kit and also a really a really nice inst instant heal. Um, that honestly, the, like 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 this heal is like really similar to like the the uh, the Kabali console. Um, but but it's still really nice to have. And so, in my personal opinion, um, tanking at um, like if if, if if you want to do the hierarchies here, um, if, if if you're a low level tank versus a if you're a level tank like engineer versus a low level tank um, tactical, um, the engineer is going to win. 
just flat out the engineer will always win. Um, whenever you get to the mid level, um, the engineer still has a slight lead in terms of that. Um, they're they're still going to do like pretty similar th um, threat generation levels, um, and the engineer is going to be able to take more. Now, whenever you get to the high end, um, yes, um, your your tactical tanks will do more threat. But still, even so, even if they add consoles and things, um, they still can't match this. They can't match the shield resistance. They can't match the shield resistance. Um, they have to they have to use special uh, um, starship traits to match the, the Nadeon inversion, and it's still not as good as Nadeon inversion. Like like uh, there's like. Um, there, there's there's like, like a trait that basically gives Nadeon an inversion, like a nerf version of it, to like the emergency part of weapons. Like it does a 50% um, energy damage cost reduction whenever you, you power this thing up. Um, but it's still minus 50% versus minus 160%. And so it's... Um, I mean like you, 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 you can still, like in terms of like the pay to win type type of scheme, Tactical can pay to kind of get similar types of survivability to a, to an engineer, but engineers will still be able to have better survive, sur better burst survival and better sustained survival um, than a tactical tank will ever have. Um, so yeah, so, so that's that's my two cents on it. Um, tactical does tons more th a threat generation. Um, the engineers are a lot more balanced in that, that they're still able to do great threat generation, but but they still have a lot of abilities to fall back on, um, alongside whatever they want to put in in their ship itself to be able to to last really long in, in engagements. So yeah, um, thank you all for watching and um, enjoy the rest of your day.